Hello. Ha. <laughs> so in my last video, I asked if you guys would be interested in hearing a video with my grandmother, giving her perspective on the internet, her opinions on the internet, sharing your life on the internet, vlogging the internet, just the internet in general. And uh, the responses were positive. Oh, yeah, yes, hello, welcome back to the channel. This has been a very short break. Obviously it was like, what, a, a day and a half off? Which is all I really needed. Got a good little recharge and I'm gonna come back into it and not continue with daily vlogs. So it was a fun little streak, but it definitely sapped a lot of my energy, not just creatively, but obviously I've got, you know, kids and other work and uh, we got the Pomona show coming up and just lots of other stuff and I, I think it's smarter if I put out not a video every day. <laughs> But anyway, this is a long one, so we're gonna get into it. There's also lots of footage that I got. We had a party at my grandmother's house for my cousin's birthday, and we had lots of family members there, and I thought it was appropriate to have footage of the family and the cousins and everybody hanging out back there. Basically, the entire family that my grandmother helped create. All, her, all of her children were there, most of her grandchildren, lots and lots of her great-grandchildren, all there in the backyard in the pool that she created many years ago, having fun just like we've been doing for decades now. So I thought that was good footage to show over it. Plus then you don't just have to sit there and see my grandmother and I talk the entire video, visually stimulate you with something besides just the two of us sitting down. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a good talk. I hope you guys enjoy it. They're not just faking it. Okay. I'm assuming, I don't know if they are. Me, I'm not. No, no, not you. That's the idea. That's that's the great thing about, yeah. about YouTube, that you, you can find lots of content out there that's not being faked whereas like everything that yeah. we've seen on TV for the past however many years has been programmed and uh, directed and exactly. prodded and, and there's you know to, to get views get ratings get people yeah. to watch it and make money well that was that, that was the whole point that was the whole point and when it gets to be that that is the only interest that is your bottom line is just to make money then you lose substance. Right. I think then you lose credibility, you lose substance, and you're cheating. You're cheating the public. Right. You're cheating the people that you're that you're broadcasting to. I don't know if this is going to be. <laughs> well, that's that's why I really enjoy uh, YouTube. Is because you get a lot of people putting out content yeah. that isn't controlled by some studio that right. has interests based in in interest and profit. It's some people I'm not saying that's not that doesn't exist. It definitely does exist. There's people out there putting out stuff with the sole purpose in mind is to we're gonna you know this is gonna become popular. We're gonna make money off that's it. Right. Um, that's right. But there's a lot of content out there. A lot of people just looking to share their experience to help people. You know, that's to help, true. To help other people. It, that that is a worthy that is a worthy thing to do. Um, as long as you're not belittling belittling um, people you don't agree with. That has happened so much recently, especially, you know. That accomplishes nothing. It accomplishes nothing. It's not an equal exchange of ideas. And if you don't leave yourself open to me, if you don't leave yourself open to other ideas, you become, your thinking becomes so narrow. That's to me where bigotry sets in to your mindset. Um, You've got a one way of thinking and it's your way or the highway, so to speak, and you stop learning. You stop learning at that point where you're not open to other people. Even if you can totally disagree with them and hopefully you can tell that person, I don't agree with you at all, but I respect your right to believe what you believe. And I think that's fine. Yeah. Everybody should have a belief of some. Most of them are worthy, even though you disagree with them totally, they're worthy because that's what that person believes and that's fine. And as long as we can respect that and live together with that, live together respecting it, and, and they in return respect yours, yeah. life would so, be so much better. Yeah, it so seems much. like such a simple concept that many Think people struggle it. with. <laughs> exactly. I'm talking about religion politics, a way of life that you choose to lead, uh, all of those things. As long as you're not uh, trying to impose that on me, have at it. Live your life. Live your life. Just let me live mine also the way I choose to. 
as long as I'm not hurting anybody. You don't hurt anybody doing, doing, living your life the way you're supposed to. As long as you're not like out trying to shoot somebody because they don't agree with you, this sort of thing, you know, oh, yeah. it's happening so much these days. It's terrible. Well, I think I think also the the abundance of media is a reason why you see it a bunch more. You know, I think stuff like this yeah. happened in the in the past. You just didn't hear about it right away, like it yeah. happened. You know, because something happened on the other side of the country, or even uh, other side of the world, or even other side of the country, or even yeah. somewhere else in the state. Exactly. You know, a hundred years ago, you wouldn't hear about it till maybe who knows. You know, you might you might hear about it eventually, but you exactly. might never. But now it's and you you hear about it, but you also hear about it twenty four seven. Right, and at any point, it, Every even if it happened yes. on the other side of the world, you could hear about it thirty seconds after it happened. Exactly, you know? exactly, and that that's where I have a problem with modern common communication. You know, it's you know it's like communicating all this information. Uh, the internet. Uh huh. Well, I have reservations about the internet. <laughs> Number one. I still haven't figured out my cell phone. <laughs> that, right there, right, right there. That that's a problem. Right there. <laughs> like I can't get to where I want to be on my. Just cell a phone. frustration with technology in general about trying to figure. I want to ask you actually. How old were you when you guys had a TV in here? Because you, it was, TV was invented shortly before you were born, correct or not? Probably. I was born Just, in 1933. So, how, did you guys ever have a TV in your house growing up? In 1951. 1951. You yes. Guys Just before I graduated high school, we got our first television. And, uh, of course, then we moved right away. I graduated in June. We came to California in July from Massachusetts. And uh, then we got a TV when we got here. But the first TV was we got was in 51. My dad went out and bought one. And... I remember watching the McCarthy hearings on TV. You know, that Joseph McCarthy, you know, he said everybody in Hollywood and half of the people in Congress were communists. Right, right. And accused them wrongly. In, in many cases, he accused them wrongly. And that was a big thing on TV. And of course, it went out at midnight. Couldn't get anything after midnight. Started at 6 in the morning, and it went until midnight, and then that was it. And we had three channels. <laughs> so it, so you've seen it go from three channels that stopped at midnight. Yes. Well, even before that, you saw the introduction of three channels from nothing yes. as far as uh, visual video media input into your home to three channels that ended at midnight to fast forward to today where you've got thousands, millions of channels coming from whatever direction you could, you could be anywhere. And mm -hmm. consuming all of the, all of this content. No and my brain where. just can't absorb all that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think anybody's can. I don't think I don't think anybody's brain can. I think that's something we're still we're definitely learning because it's so new, yes. and we're just kind of figuring out that people not necessarily meant to consume this much information exactly. all the time at once, and it's yes. causing issues in people. I, we did a video um, a couple of days ago about anxiety, dealing with anxiety, and I was so blown away by how many people replied that they were dealing with anxiety. It was like, it seemed like everybody that like... Exactly, exactly. So much of the information is worthless. I go through, like, I go on my, and I get, God only knows how many channels on my TV now. I go through the guide to see, okay, maybe there's something interesting on. And the stuff that's on, the stuff that's on TV, so much of it is worthless. There's no point even watching this stuff. Well, some of it is absolutely trash. And even though it supposedly comes on in the middle of the night or something, it's still trash, in my opinion. That appeals to some people? Fine. I don't have to look at it. I can turn that channel. Yeah, that's what I love about YouTube. You can you can yes. like you can find exactly what the stuff kind of content you're looking for and you yeah. can and you can have it and it's right there. Yes. That's, yes. Um what let's see. The main thing I was going to talk to you about is the idea of putting your own life on the internet, you know? Yeah. That, was, that was what we discussed yesterday for a, a moment. I don't. Right. I know I, you don't. <laughs> I, you know I don't. I don't. You know, I, they ha I do have um, people that get to me on Facebook. I don't put anything on Facebook. I don't even, and my picture thing. The birthday cake? <laughs> it's the birthday cake. It's the birthday cake your dad gave me when I retired from uh, the school. It was a birthday cake. It was so cute. He said, toodaloo. 
<laughs> it's so cute, so funny. We laugh about that. Only your father would come up with something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Just, and just for context, that's because your name is Lou. That's that exactly. Doesn't know that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. To make it to make sense. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't even have that. I, no, I don't. I. In my growing up, if something was going on within your family, that's exactly where it stayed. I even taught my own children. If we've got something happening within our family, it does not go out that front door. It stays behind that front door. We work it out in our family. And I think looking at our family, all hundred of us, <laughs> all now I think this what with our in-law children and the grand great grand I think we're at about 35, 34, 35, right around that number. 35 grand people. 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 People in our family starting now me, because I'm the oldest, down to Sophie, who's just couple of months old. I think looking at our family and how we get along, how we all love each other, and how we treat each other, is because I think we don't put, you may have ideas that are different, but we also respect each other and, and then respect each other's ideas and respect the way the different one of us the difference is in the, the way we conduct our lives and everything. We respect that. And if we do have words to say, you know, maybe that should, we go to that individual, at least I hope we do, we go to that individual, and I think we do, and say, hey, we need to talk about this a little bit. But it stays in the family. We don't put it out there for everybody to see and everybody to know. And that's what I disagree with, people putting their lives out there. So what happens is then there are people out there who know more about me than I know about me. You know, <laughs> sure. Well, oh. there's definitely, I tell you right now, there's definitely, I mean, because obviously I put a bunch of my life out there. And, that's your business. Right. That's part of your business. Right. And then, well, that's where, that's definitely where it started. You know, again, so people could know who they're doing business with a bit. And exactly. then I, I just found myself wanting to share more and more, I think a big part of that was because as a kid growing up, even into my mid twenties, I was very secretive about myself and yes, who I was. Yes, you were. And um, and so I I found this like thing of like, oh, I can put myself out there, and, and people are responding like in kind to it. And now what drives me a little bit more to do it is that knowing that how our, how special our family was, and I always recognized it as a kid because all of my friends had came from broken homes and that just you know didn't have the, the family things that we have, and I found mm -hmm. that there's a lot of people out there that don't. Still, yeah. even not just that, not just within my circle of friends, but lots of people that don't. So I think it it really helps people out there that don't have that or want that to help inspire them to see what it's like and what can yes. come of it. So it's and how good that can be and how good it can be. What a good thing that is. Yeah. You know, if I think in my opinion, if the rest of the world treated each other and acted like our family acts and interacts with each other, it'd be a beautiful world, wouldn't it? That's so that's that's why I'm putting it out there. there that's why go. I'm putting it out there. there you go. Good <laughs> that's for that's you. that's what it that's what it became. Um, yes. that's what it's becoming. I should yes. say. Uh, th there are downsides. I would say, of course, you you put it out there publicly. Anybody can come. I I tend to go and read the comments because there's a lot of good people out there that I can sure. respond with, and I've, people that I've now met in real life that we've hung out and had great times. People invited me to their homes and flown me out, bought me plane tickets to come and hang out and, yes. and have great times and it's and spreading that in, in the re not just on the internet but in the real world. You know, not just a fake virtual reality but an actual yeah. real reality. <laughs> the downside is to read all those comments you always get at least a couple people who think you know you better than you know yourself and want to tell you how to live your life. So if you go down there and read it. <laughs> that's right. That that's where that's where the kind of the hitch comes in right there. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes. The choice is to either to not read the comments and not even have to deal with that, just put it out there and, and let it go. Yeah. But if but the way I, at this point at least I still want to get that that back and forth so I can I deal with those few economists that are almost bound to be there and just develop a little bit of a thicker skin that I didn't have when I was yes, a kid. Yes, you know, yes, yes. So. Thickening it up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been very fortunate in my friendships. And the people I've had around me, and uh, there are people who, you know, weren't particularly crazy about me, but that's okay. You know, you, apparently you have a reason. I don't know what it is. If you want to talk about it, come and talk to me. Talk to me. Don't uh, you know? Go behind my back. 
Yeah. Don't like that. Oh, that's always driven me crazy too. That I don't like that. If you have if you have something that about me that's bugging you, you come and talk to me. We'll sit. We'll have a cup of coffee. We have a Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> have a cup of coffee. We'll talk about it and see if we can work it out. If we can't work it out, okay, you go your way. I'll go mine. Yeah. And that's the end of it, right there. Yeah. Um, and so many times it's allowed to escalate and fester. And part of that is the stuff sometimes that they put out there on, on the um, internet. You know, the comments they make. Someone's got, why do that? Why? I don't understand that. And there again, that's my 50s thinking. I don't understand that because if we had, a, back then, if we had a, something going on with somebody that we talked about it, you know? And if you didn't talk about it, they didn't want to talk, you just let it go. You just let it go. You didn't keep at it. You didn't keep adding fuel to that fire at all because that accomplishes nothing. But enemy making is what that happened, how that happens. And that's another problem I have with um, uh, the bullying stuff that goes on on the internet. You know, and the, these kids, these children, high schoolers, middle schoolers now, they're down to middle school with they're making, you know, they're on that, that internet thing and they're writing horrible things about their classmates sometimes. My opinion, where are the parents not monitoring what these kids are putting on, on that and the things they're saying? Stop it right there and, and have a talk with them and explain to them, this is not okay to do that. That is not okay. And, and then these young girls posing for pictures and stuff. Again, where are the parents? You think I'd let my daughter, I would have let my daughter do that? Not in a million years. She didn't walk out of this house unless she was dressed properly. <laughs> So I have a lot of issues with that kind of thing. I also have a lot of issues with people putting, uh, putting out there, you know, their angst, all this stuff that's just troubling them so much. Well, then you go get help, in my opinion. You go and if you've got those kind of problems, you don't put it out there. In my opinion, you go and you get help somewhere, a counselor. Um, for the kids, for kids, go to your school counselor. If you can't talk to your parents, go to your school counselor. They all have them. They all have school counselors. Go to them. Work it out on a one-on-one -on -one basis, not on you and the world. That's good. That's a good point. I never really thought about it quite like that. But I mean, because mm -hmm. for me, my initial thought when when right when you started talking about that was like it would be an outlet for someone to to like get it off their chest. But to your point, like putting that out there doesn't necessarily help the person mm -hmm. or anybody else. It's actually, to your point, go take it. It goes back to something that I think about a lot, which is, you know, take care of yourself and then take care of each other. Yes. It, it's something I say all the time. I started saying it is just like a little thing I put at the end of every video. It's because, very good, by the way. I like that. Thanks. Because, and the, there's a purpose behind it. It's not just meant to be a little catchphrase, cliche thing. It's like the realness of that is something that you're talking about right now. Take care of yourself. So you can take it. Don't put out that kind of energy out there in the world. Go figure out what it is that's wrong, and then go share how you fixed it. Yeah. I mean, a, a cry for help is one thing, but if you just put it out there, just to vent, then it's putting that energy out there, and it's going to bounce off other people and create exactly. potentially more problems if, exactly. rather than the other way. You know. Yes. So. Yes. And there's lots of help out there, like all these mass shootings, you know, and these young men, young men, going out there with a a gun and shooting people, why? They've got to have horrible feelings about themselves, maybe, like you said, take care of yourself. And again, parenting is a profession. <laughs> yeah, we had a video about that recently, too. <laughs> As you well you know, parenting is a profession, and it's one of the hardest jobs you'll ever have, is to be a good parent. It takes watchfulness, it takes being there, it takes being able to discipline with kindness. And Which that's one of the strongest struggles right there is to, be, to discipline your kid and not be a complete asshole. <laughs> that's right, and be kind about it. And but above all, to love them without limitations. 
unconditional total love no matter what no matter what this child does you got to show them you love them no matter what but you also have to discipline them and if you're going to discipline if you're going to not threaten but if you're going to say okay these are the consequences you do this this is the consequence you better follow through with that so they know okay when you say something you bloody well mean it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's no doubt in their mind that this is what's going to happen if this and this okay well i don't want that so i better not do this right <laughs> And be very and be watchful. Be very watchful. That's what I mean when these kids are putting stuff out there and on the Facebook and they're saying awful things and they're bullying another child, a classmate. You know, I, that. Where are the parents in those cases? Where are they? Where are they? That's because my kids never had a computer in their room. If they, of course, we didn't actually, we got our computer, we strictly business, so they really didn't have a computer, period. <laughs> so, anyway, that was not an issue, apparently, because they didn't have a computer. They didn't have those little magic boxes that everybody in the world has, and they have those little magic boxes they talk to and they don't talk to each other. I almost got in trouble at the airport. Grandpa and I were flying to, I hope this is okay to show you this. Let me restart it, so because these cameras will stop recording after a certain time, okay. so let me just restart it so we don't lose it. Yes, that, everything is okay. That's the great thing about this, is we don't have to censor ourselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, um, we were in an airport, and I have a thing about people being this way all the time, you know, like that. I have a thing about that, especially when you're with somebody else. There was this young couple came in. Grandpa and I were sitting waiting to go take our flight. And there was a couple sitting, a couple came in and sat like from here to that desk, a table away from me, us. They no sooner had sat, <laughs> first thing they did, they, they got their food, the food was there, and the, the box was right there. Then next, the food sat there, and they picked up the box. Both of them are this. They never, the whole lunch, I sat there purposely to watch the whole lunch. They sat there through their whole lunch, never once looked at each other, never once said a word to each other, and they were the whole time in this in this little box. So I said to, said to Grandpa, I said, well, maybe they don't know each other. Well, they obviously did. They came in together. He paid for the food. And I said, Grandpa, I said, you know? And he said, no, you don't. He said. <laughs> No, you better not. <laughs> and I said, I'm gonna. <laughs> he said, no. I said, I'm gonna, as we're walking by, leaving, I'm gonna say something. He says, no, you're not. And I said, yes, I am. And he says, what are you gonna say? I said, I'm gonna tell him, I think you two need to put those little boxes down and talk to each other instead. So what did he do? Grabbed me by the hand and took me. <laughs> Grandfather had a, a particular way of handling me. <laughs> oh God! I want to bring this back to home because okay. we, we we didn't really start at a spot. We just kind of sat down and started talking, which is what I wanted to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but the the topic was the internet and putting your life on the internet. That yeah. now we we've bounced around quite a bit, but that's okay. fine. That's why I like these conversations to go just where I like them to go wherever they happen to go. Okay. To. So that's good. Um, but I do have a couple questions that I okay. wrote down, if I could okay. ask you. Because um, um, you, do, you do have a phone. You do have the access to the internet. Now I, yes, I have myself. Versus, I, versus not. Yeah, I don't know where it is at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a fixture. So that's, that's my first question, I guess. How, how many days or how much time in a day do you spend, do you think, looking at I mean, I know you'd like to use it to keep track of us and see what we're doing. Yes, I do. See pictures yes. of the kids and the yes, great grandkids. And... Yes, I track. That's what I use it for, basically. If I need to make a phone call, I've used the text. Imagine that, using your phone to make a phone imagine, call. Imagine, <laughs> imagine. That's, that's if I remember to take it with me on purse and I'm not at home. If I'm at home, I use my landline all the time. 
I, I, I much prefer talking to people. Um, you can tell by the change in the voice, I think. That oh, you sure. can say the same thing, but it can come off two different ways. Well, that's where a lot of miscommunication happens exactly. via the internet. Is you, not, you exactly. lose that, that inflection of tone exactly. of the voice. And it gets misread or miscommunicated. Exactly. So that's why I like talking. Talking on the phone. I, I mean, I don't talk. I talk if I have a message to give or something to receive. I just don't talk for pleasure on the phone. There again, I'd rather go to that person, have a cup of coffee, and chat. Yeah. You know, I don't chat on the phone. Well, and my cell phone, um, I do text now because I have found that if you um, <clears throat> email it, email doesn't get read. <laughs> so the text never goes through, of course, because I'm emailing. So I figured, well, you got the message, but it didn't because they didn't go to email. They went through the text. So especially Karen in particular, I have to text her, though Grandpa texted her one time. And he says, he said at the end of, this is the last text you'll ever get from me. <laughs> because you just, you just didn't do that. <laughs> okay. But uh, as far as um, my phone, how much time do I spend a day on my phone? Well, if I spend on a good day when I'm spending a lot of time on my phone, my cell phone, I would say 45 minutes. That's definitely less than I think most people with cell phones these days. I, yeah. would, I would venture to say that most people spend and more time on And that's when I'm that. looking at, um, that's if I have to call somebody because I'm not home and I need to like call Lynn and tell her where I am because she gets excited if she doesn't know where I am like for four hours. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, or if I need, you know, to notify somebody where I'll be, or so, but it's, it's usually for a very specific reason. Um, but if if forty if, if I'm on it forty five minutes, that's a lot in a day. How would you feel if the internet was gone? Just like that, life would go on. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the questions today, ma'am. <laughs> you, you answered in, in my first, you answered like all of my questions already without yeah. me asking them yet. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Life would go on, wouldn't Life it? Life would go on. It, it would. definitely would. There, it, there's a big part of me that, that often yearns for the simpler times that I, because I, I was alive before the internet as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's a lot of technology around by the time I was happening, you know, but like I was in school when they first introduced computers to school. Mm, you know, mm -hmm, that was when mm -hmm. I was in like fifth grade and then freshman high school, it was about the time the internet came around. Yeah. So I remember the time before, you know, when there was no, when you had right. to meet somebody where you said you're going to meet them. Yeah. Otherwise you weren't going to see them. <laughs> yeah. I think, but I, yeah, as far as the, I mean, the thing was with every good thing, which the internet could be a good thing. Comes back. That's a bad thing. That's, also. that's true of everything in the universe, that's I think. True. That's right. Except, no, it's, of course, I come from the time where you had a phone and you had like seven people on the phone. So if you picked up the phone, you could hear somebody else's conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we say, oh, excuse me, I want, I want to dial uh, network 732. You know, and the operator would plug you in to that. That's the kind of phone that, that I would just. <laughs> that I started with, that I started with. And then it went from there into what it is now. You can imagine why it blows my mind. I think many people's minds are blown whether they know it or not. Oh, at least I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's right where I'm gonna cut it. I hope grandma's perspective was something there that you guys could uh, not necessarily relate to or maybe relate to, depending on what's going on with you in your life and where you were from. But uh, yeah, that was, that was a good one. I, I enjoyed doing it and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you're having a great day. Aloha.